Welcome back. This is lecture two of you to know. Today, we're gonna to be learning about hierarchies. First, we gotta get into what's a hierarchy. Well, you have problems and you want solutions to your problems. It's also worth noting that you live in society amongst many other people with many other problems. Now, since you have problems and since you want solutions and you live in society amongst other people with problems, it's an inevitable fact that certain people are better at solving certain problems than others. And you can think of it arranged in a hierarchical structure that looks kind of like a big triangle. So up at the top here, there's a few people who are highly skilled. So there's a few highly skilled people up at the top. And most people are stuck down here at the bottom. This is why, for instance, only a small amount of the population are professional athletes, and most of us can't do a pull-up. So if there's any problem with skill involved, the people who are trying to solve that problem are gonna arrange themselves hierarchically. And it's not just people solving problems. This is, these hierarchies are found in pretty much all living ecosystems. So what you need to know 101 focuses on is how to avoid being down here and what strategies you should implement if you want the greatest possibility of making it up here. Now, just because you implement these strategies does not necessarily mean you'll be able to advance up the hierarchy. You know, like, I will never be a professional basketball player. At the same time, it's also worth noting that in our goal to solve our problems, we cooperate. So there's two elements to social hierarchy. There's cooperation and there's competition. A really good way to think about these things is think about hockey. Is hockey a competitive game? Well, yes. It's a competition between two teams, but it's also a cooperative game. Each team is five players cooperating, all trying to solve a common problem. And remember kids, winning or losing doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it's how you play the game, which sounds kind of silly at first, right? Like, don't you want to win the game? Isn't this the end goal no matter what? And what I'm gonna argue is no, that's not the most important thing because life is not just a game, it's a set of games. And what you need to know, focuses on, is preparing you for the set of all possible games. So we've got all these little dominance hierarchies, all these different games. You can think of this as the meta game. So back to, back to it's not, it's not win or lose of how you play the game. And that's because sportsmanship is very important. Why? Because Cooperation is also part of the picture. You're not just trying to win the game, you want to win the tournament, you want to win the series, you want to win the set of all games. And to do so, you need to manage both your ability to cooperate and your ability to compete. Athletes like Wayne Gretzky, Roger Federer, and Derek Jeter are all known for being great sportsmen. And to have good sportsmanship, that's dealing with reputation, character, and principle. So these things, being a good sport, having a fine reputation, being someone of high character, someone who lives by principle, someone who's very honest, very truthful, these are the skills that make you a great sportsman. You combine this with levels of cooperation and competition, and you have all the tools you need to give yourself the best possible chance. Again, even if you play the game the right way, that does not mean you'll win. But you give yourself the best possible chance of winning. At the end of the day, that's all we can do. Anyway, if you align yourself properly and you embody the characteristics of great sportsmen and sportswomen before you, then you give yourself the best possible chance to rise up dominance hierarchies. You give yourself the best possible chance to win games, which is cool. Winning is a lot of fun. It would be cool if school taught you more about how to win, but they don't really do that. There is no useful thing to know, which is silly, that's stupid. Now, there are no technical prerequisites to take you to know 101, but to get the most out of these lectures, you really want to have a conceptual background in a few disciplines. Now, you should really know a thing or two about math, economics, history, sociology, philosophy, psychology, and it'd also be really good if you understood the engineering method. And also the peer review system. Now, I don't think you can find an undergraduate program in the country that will provide you this background framework, which is a problem. Like we're talking about some of the most important things in this class. Anyway, we're gonna pick from math and econ and a little bit of history. 
and we're gonna come over here and we're gonna talk about the Pareto distribution. So we remember what we learned about the shape of hierarchies, that very few people occupy the top and most people are here at the bottom. This phenomenon can be explained mathematically by the Pareto distribution. So on the y-axis, you have stuff, and on the x-axis, you have number of people. Now, as you see, a small amount of the people have most of the stuff, and most of the people have none of the stuff. This can also be thought of as the Matthew principle from the New Testament, where Jesus says, to those who have much, more will be given, and to those with nothing, everything will be taken. Okay, this is Matthew 25, 29. So the idea is, if you're going to college in hopes of your college degree getting you this amazing career, college degrees get you in this middle chunk right here. You're not going to have nothing. Like, you'll be doing pretty good. With a college degree, you'll most likely be making anywhere from $40,000 a year up to like $500,000 a year. I'm sure like the highest paid doctors and surgeons are making somewhere close to half a million. However, if you're one of those people who's really, really competitive and really, really wants at least to try to end up up here with the lots of the stuff, if you want to be one of these few people, you're going to have to act out a little different strategy. This strategy to make it to the top is what useful to know is all about.